This house just sold, and I'm gonna tell you how much it sold for and how long it took because I think the answer will surprise you. The builder wants $2.5 million for this brand new house in East Nashville. And when you look at the pictures on the inside, it's a five bed house that's 4,500 square feet. And it's been sitting on the market for six months. And so one has to wonder, is the builder actually gonna be able to get $2.5 million for this house? I mean, it's really nice on the inside, it's stunning. And I think the only way that that house sells for that price is if this builder gets lucky and a desperate buyer fleeing California comes in. It's pretty hard to find a buyer who can pay 2.5 million in Nashville right now, especially with the inventory of homes for sale skyrocketing over the last couple of years. There's been a big drop in these wealthy California buyers coming into Nashville and paying cash. And so this builder, they're probably gonna have to cut the price. I'm curious, vote in the poll below. What do you think this brand new custom house in East Nashville should end up selling for. It did not sell for $2.5 million. Let's just take a look at the, the overview of the listing. This house, it's on Holly Street. It's right near Shelby Park. I'm gonna show you on the map. In fact, let me just show you on the map right now. So this is East Nashville. It's right near Shelby Park. It's right near the golf course, okay? This is not gonna be a busy part of the street because let's, let's be honest, it's on the end. It's right next to the, the park. So you're gonna be walking distance to the park. You're, what, an eight-minute drive to downtown. You can walk to Frothy Monkey in the mornings and get your coffee. This is an awesome location for East Nashville. If you like East Nashville, this is an awesome location. And we look at the property itself. You know, one criticism I can see right up front is just that there's literally zero lot. Like, they put as much house as they could possibly put on this lot. And that's kind of the only criticism I could think for this house is it's just... It feels a little bit stuffy for me for a two and a half million dollar house. But you can see, not only do you get the main house, but look at this garage apartment right here. It's a three car garage. You have a one car garage for the apartment and then you have the apartment itself. I think it's very nice, but what's it gonna sell for? Now let's take a look at the market dynamics of this neighborhood. This is Lachlan Springs area. You can see that we've never had as much inventory as we had this past year. We had. 18 active listings in this neighborhood, at least since 2022, okay? Just as far back as I go. But you can see 18 in September, it's now down to 13, but look at the price cuts. Price cuts, we have eight price cuts in late October, which is as many as we've had. You can see even now we have seven, which is as many as we've had. Okay, so there, that's like a warning sign for this neighborhood. Let's take a look at close volume here. We peaked in close volume in 2021 at 104. We're now down to 38. That's a 60% drop in close volume. That's another warning sign. We've got lower close volume and we have higher inventory. So it's not an inventory problem and we have higher price cuts. So this neighborhood is feeling soft and weak. However, we also know that it's been sellers holding up the price because you can see in Q1 of 2022, we closed at 445 a foot. We actually broke through that peak in Q2 of 2024 at 473. Now keep in mind, that's with a 60% drop in volume. It's clearly showing that prices are holding up. There's not sellers that are capitulating in the face of weaker demand in this market. Let's take a look at the scatter plot here. One thing I want you to see is, uh, let's switch over to sales price here, okay? What I want you to see is that in this neighborhood, there's actually been one, two, three, four houses that have sold for over $2 million. Okay, so four houses in the past, there were two in 2022 at 2.5, which has not happened since, but there is history of $2 million houses selling in this neighborhood, though rare. Now, what's interesting about that is, if we look at the market tracker here, and we look in Davidson County for single family homes with a list price of 2 million, one thing that I want you to know, there's not many $2 million buyers ever but the market has grown 50% since 2022. So the fact that there are more $2 million buyers today than there's ever been is shocking. Now, this isn't condos. This is just single family homes. We're, at, we're on pace of a 33 $2 million buyers annually selling just in Davidson County. Okay, we did this in Williamson County. It'd be even higher. Than, than, in fact, you know what? Let's just do it in Williamson County so you can see that this market is not a soft market, okay? It's a slower market, and certainly it's a more profitable market for builders. You can build a $2 million house. That's profitable. Let's take a look at this, though, okay? Look, 
There's never been more demand for $2 million houses, even in Williamson County. There's 38 right now on annualized pace. This is a growing market for $2 million houses. So now I haven't seen anybody definitively show me that there is a massive drop in inbound migration, even though you can look at U-Haul, you can look at Census, you can look at Redfin data, you can look at LinkedIn data. The, the fact is, is there's, there's still inbound migration happening here. Has it slowed? It's it's very hard. I mean, you hear anecdotes, but if, if you have hard data, please share it with me. I would love to know if it's actually, in fact, slowed, but I cannot find it. Okay, so now that we've established that, how did this house do? And you can see it sold for, drum roll, $2.15 million. This is a $300,000 discount. So that's almost 15%, by the way. That's insane. 15%. Now, I did a little napkin math, and I thought, okay, if they bought the lot for $600,000, and this house has not just uh, 40, 4,500 feet square feet, but it's got a 750 square feet apartment, that's 5,250 feet. Okay, let's say cost to build is 250 a foot. Is that about what it costs? If you are a builder, let me know. Now, if you add back the lot of 600,000, that puts the cost of this house at 1.9. If, if Let's just assume this is cash, which I don't know if they finance it or not. There's no evidence they finance it, but let's just assume it's cash. If you tie up $1.9 million of cash that you could have been getting 5% in treasuries, that's $100,000 a year in cost. Now, the opportunity cost of carrying this was probably $100,000, $150,000. And you're kind of at $2 million in terms of money tied up and opportunity cost. And you made $150,000 over two years. It's not exactly a home run in my opinion. Maybe if that cost to build is much lower. Let's take a look at this from a buyer's perspective and let's start with rent. Okay, when we look at the rent, okay, there's nothing for rent. It's 5,000 square feet, four plus bed. But when you, when you zoom out, these larger houses in Davidson County, 9,500, 9,000, 10,000. You can see this one, 9,000. I am pretty confident you could get $10,000 a month for this house in rent. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but I really think you get $10,000 a month for this house. And if you did the mortgage calculator in 215, put 20% down at 6.5% interest, your monthly payment with taxes and insurance, $12,538. Your amortization would be $1,500. You would still be paying $11,000 a month to live there, plus you'd have to maintain it, versus if you rented it for $10,000. Not that people that have $2 million care about renting versus buying the way the average person does. Active inventory has never been higher either. There's a lot more, there's a lot more inventory for the $2 million market. There's a lot more options. There's a lot more competition. And that forced the price of this house down quite a bit. I don't know if it was a home run for the seller. I don't know if it was a home run for the buyer either. I think it was pretty good though. I think I think the buyer got a pretty good deal, certainly for that neighborhood, because at the end of the day, if you include that 750 square feet in the cost per foot, you now get, you get 409 a foot. And if we go back to the scatter plot here and we look, we're at price per square foot. Oh, let's let's just do this. We can see 409 a foot is the lower quartile. Can you imagine getting a, a brand new house that's the most expensive house for lower than the lower quartile price per square foot? My opinion, from a comp perspective, the buyer won on this one. The buyer won on this one. It's because the seller, they finally capitulated. So they're one of the ones that capitulated. And you can see if you're buying in this market, you want to get more of a discount because there's more inventory, there's more price cuts. The market's softer, the volume's down. A lot of yellow flags, but there's also a lot more $2 million buyers out there. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next Saturday.